Hey, welcome back to the Alexandrian Codex. I'm Alex. This is where the water tastes like wine. We died spontaneously for some reason that wasn't clearly conveyed by the game. Right, whatever. But no shame in dying. Everyone does it. You still have a job to do. But if you want to learn anything more from me, now is the time. And I'm sure we'll end up seeing more of each other before you're through. Presumably every time I die. Oh, I can tell you every story I've gotten, huh? I'm just telling a story at it's random. It's a big country, and if you're having trouble making headway, hop a train, hitch a ride. Maybe everyone feels that their choices don't matter in the larger scheme of things. But somehow things manage to change for better or for worse. I'm kind of glad we get to see you again, weird character. You haven't earned your freedom yet. Don't be so impatient, though. Haven't you ever heard that it's about the journey, not the destination? I have, in fact. The college I went to, that was their motto. Uh, emperor? Sun? Future? Whoa, two coins. Do you think people are trapped in this country? Shackled to the land? Or trapped by this country, perhaps? Seduced into believing it has all that they need and that none will ever be better? Hmm. I'm your boss in the sense that you owe me, and so I get to tell you how to pay the debt. But I'm not in charge. Go on your way, Seeker. I'm sure we'll meet at least once more. Think about what we've discussed, and good luck on the rest of your task. See, mostly it just seemed like you responded to things that I was saying. Yeah, why did I... Wait, we're back in Minnesota? Excuse you? I'm pressing the M button. I'm pressing many buttons. I'm pressing the exit key? Nothing? Game. Hmm. Not seeming to accept any input. Like I'm pressing E here. I'm pressing exit to pull up the main menu. Nothing. All right, let's crash it. And start it up again because something clearly went wrong there. I've only played nine hours of this? Yeah, that's believable. Presumably, when you open, the game will be loaded. Yeah. Yeah, like that. And then you'll plot me out in Minnesota. Minneapolis. Yeah. There we go. Oh, I can't say that I'm pleased about being kicked all the way back to Minnesota, but I suppose the cities are the safe points that you have. Yeah, I was full up on everything. Except for energy, I think. Wait, this is south, right? Yeah, we're going south. <laughs> I'm a little irked by that, actually. 
You died! For, from what? How did I die? The game wasn't conveying that I was about to die. My health seemed to be full, my rest seemed to be at least half. And I've had all of those things drop down to zero or completely empty before. And that has not resulted in death. Nor was death ever tutorialized or a lose condition tutorialized. So this isn't a lose condition so much as it is irritating <laughs> and a waste of time. Des Moines, Iowa. Did we go to Des Moines? I think so. Yeah, we're going down to Kansas. Yeah, we're definitely not whistling the same song that we used to be whistling. Well, no, there it is. That ties into it. Find me a river crossing. Don't tell me that was the closest river crossing to Kansas. <laughs> ah, there's Kansas City, which, as discussed, is not in Kansas. No more whistle prompts. Okay. A, return to location. Return to Miami. No, I could quick travel to Miami. Oh, okay, so... We get items linked to different locations. I guess we're just gonna go talk to whoever this is over here. <laughs> so I thought there must be more than two river crossings on the Missouri River, but... Just what I know. Cassidy, Matthew, S. Burns, Chapter 3. Looks like I'm still me and you're still you. That's right, my favorite dude. A pity, isn't it? To be stuck with ourselves like this. Well, speak for yourself, I like me. All this wandering and I couldn't escape the one thing I wanted to be away from more than anything else. I suppose that in the end, we all have to settle down inside ourselves. But I don't want to be the way I am now. If I could, I'd live inside the past, inside the time Silas and I had together, back on the road together, forever. Do you know any stories that will make me laugh? A tall order, I know. Maybe. Not much of a laughing man. Shaw's Life and Times, this is an auto success. This isn't funny, that's not funny. That sure shit ain't funny. That's not funny. Nope. Oh. I don't think I have any funny stories. I have the superhuman strength of the happy new grandfather. Maybe that's funny? I don't know. It's weird. I laugh. Hey, uh, you don't need to try and cheer me up like Oh, no. Nope. What wishes that's cheerful. we have? Well, we both had our own artistic ambitions. Can't say they came true. He wanted to write his novel. I was happy with a few lines of verse here and there. Sometimes, I wondered how he'd portray me in his book. I had an image of myself that I wanted him to capture, to make immortal. I still wonder, because I still haven't seen what he wrote. Mm. The finished manuscript is probably lying in the dark of his desk drawer. A secret masterpiece, waiting for its dawn. Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. Do you know any stories like that? 
Yeah, sadness I got. Sadness I got in great supply. Soldier who came home to find his girl getting married in Michigan. That one was like getting locked out in the cold with nothing but your sorrow. I liked it. Travel? Well, that journey was incredible. We went from San Francisco all the way to Albany on that trip. That's a hell of a trip, especially having to drive. It took us about a month. We didn't rush. Silas isn't an outgoing person, nor is he particularly tall or commanding. But something about him makes everyone want him to like them. It meant people were always chatting him up, giving him good information, letting us know about places to stay. Those same people would look me up and down, then go back to talking to him. Huh. I need an optimistic story right now. Something to put a smile on my face. Can you think of any like that? Optimism, huh? Mysterious woman preaching gospel to all who would listen? It's not negative. I don't really know what kind of implication it has. I like that yeah. one. Makes me feel the way Silas used to in the old days. Faith often comes as a variety of hope. Hope for yourself. There's some kind of magic that happens when you're with someone who makes you feel like the person you want to be. In my old life, I never had the chance to talk about life, the point of things, what I'm supposed to be doing here. If I ever ventured it, people called me a freak or worse. Now in comes this man Silas who is built of these thoughts. You can see how I believed he was sent from the heavens just for me. Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. Do you know any stories like that? Yeah. Sad? This is kind of sad. Maybe it's supposed to be spooky. To me, it was just sad. Anonymous grave. The tragedy Hell yeah. in that story, it's real. Have you ever tried writing poetry? A lot. When I look back on it, I see how Silas came into my life at a crucial time. It was a time of change. All time is of change, man. I stopped what I was doing before, working at a company. I was searching for what my real work in the world could be. <laughs> I wanted to find what it meant to be alive. And then, a miracle. A man who shows me there's a whole other way to live in the world. A way I couldn't have imagined on my own. He seemed so free and easy compared to the way I always got on. Last town I stopped in, I didn't have cash for the bookstore. Do you have any stories like those paperback adventures? Really? Mm hmm. Ba, ba, ba. Thunderbird people who fly when they fall from heights. That seems exciting. Exciting? Well, that's not the kind of thing I can write, but I like hearing it told. Freedom. Am I really free now? I don't know what I'll do next, but I'm starting to understand that it has to be something different. Mm. I've been on the road for a while now, but this whole time, I've been as trapped as I've always been. Yeah. My mind, just going in circles, repeating the same old conversation, revisiting the same old places. I catch a glimpse of real freedom now and then. I just need to find the best way to pursue it. The sun will be rising soon. I've got to pack my camp and get ready to go. Up at dawn every day, thinking about how to get to the next town, how to eat, where to rest. It's like the trip I took with Silas, but I'm on my own this time. If your trip takes you out this way, we might meet again. Yeah, eventually. Wasn't planning on meeting you back too soon. But then the game decided, hey, you know what? You're going somewhere completely different from where you were intending. We're just cutting straight west from here, back into Kansas proper, yeah. Oh god, what, what are you doing, game? 
seem awfully confused, my dude. Hello. Better story. Ah, Alright, what you got? Story about a soldier who journeyed 25 years for love, and this one, you know. Alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of soldier coming home in time to see his lover marrying somebody else, this is about him journeying for 25 years. Yeah, Arkansas. The Arkansas River's almost right. The kerning isn't as bad as the Missouri was, but Arkansas is a river. I'm not seeing a damn thing. Not really. <laughs> that, that final. Yeah, most of the way through Kansas. Not a damn thing. After this, we're gonna get south in Oklahoma, so I'm gonna keep going the Arkansas River. Hoping that we find something north of it before we reach uh, the end of Kansas. If we don't, well, then we cut on south, go Oklahoma. See what we can't do down there. Wow, nothing, huh? We got one thing in Kansas. And it wasn't even a story, it was just a bit of money. I suppose that shouldn't come as a surprise. Kansas is really empty. But the fact that Nebraska and North Dakota had more is laughable. So states don't have much going on. My mother, I believe, was born in Kansas. Still have distant family in Kansas, owning farms in the middle of nowhere. Unremarkable little bits of land that people think are vitally important. The homesteader mentality, something I get, has a very romantic appeal in certain respects, but it's also a little ridiculous. You know, people going out into the wilderness or going out into uh, unimproved land with the intention to make something new. And then the process, just distancing themselves from the rest of humanity. Not really making anything new, just further away. Now, sometimes, especially when you're colonizing a new place, some substantial change can happen, but just moving the next county over, most of the time all you make is a ghost town. Or a future ghost town. So the Midwest Southwest line cuts through Oklahoma? Yeah. Wait, we're in the Southwest. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Southwest is here. No, southeast is here. Midwest runs into Texas. So after Oklahoma, we'll finally be hitting the southwest. Uh, I was walking along this and I didn't see anything? Suppose that we can go swing back over there, but I wasn't seeing anything. I think what we can do is just cut south into Texas proper. 
this isn't south. No, he says head south and then starts walking west into Oklahoma City. The old man's shoulders slant under the bright colored bird. Maybe that's why he stands with a cane. Man and bird watch your approach with interest. Howdy, stranger, says the man. Howdy, stranger, croaks the bird. What up, Toucan Sam? The man shifts his shoulder, bobbing up the bird. Rosalie here tells fortunes. There's pride in his voice. Ain't no other like her. Care to hear yours? Just a single coin. He leans on his cane and extends a well-worn palm. I don't have any Fruit Loops. No, come on, what's here? Your coin disappears into the man's jacket. He jingles one pocket, then scratches Rosalie at the back of her bill. She rasps. The greatest burdens on your road are the ones you choose to carry man cracks a smile make of it what you will <laughs> I like to think it means our lives get easier when we forgive ourselves she's a smart bird is Rosalie the man tips his hat good luck on your way all right that just seems like a scam to me <laughs> Oh, want to hear my talking bird? Yeah, all right. Da, 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 da. New story. What are we getting better? The Revenge of the Passenger Pigeon. Da, 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 da. All right, I'm tired again. Am I just gonna fucking drop dead without warning again? Because that would be uh, a woman crouches in this meadow, making quick fine strokes on a fresh page in her notebook. She gives you a small, careful smile. Want to see what I'm working on? She asks. Nudes. She beckons you closer, and you see a flower half finished on the first page of her book. As you watch, though, she moves quickly to the next page and begins to draw the cluster of tangled stamens inside it. Huh. With eerie, incredibly detailed accuracy. She speeds up. She flips to the next page and draws a minuscule bug nestled between the flower's delicate innards. Flip. Next page. Now she's drawn its eye. It blooms across the page in under three seconds, as real as anything. Too real. Cool. But before you can ask, flip. Next page. I want this lady's drawing powers. Now she's drawn some weird cluster of stringy filaments. Is this the surface of the bug's eye? But she's on to the next page faster than ever. Fingers of blur as they spread a tangle of dots and lines. Your stomach somersaults. Keep watching. Flip. Next page. Dots and blurs woven together, incoherent, nothing you've ever seen before. You feel absolutely sick to your stomach. The woman's hand is invisible. Yeah, keep watching, Flip. man. Next page, a new tangle of dots and blurs, weird and familiar. You taste bile. Keep watching. Flip. Next page, a cloudy orb in a sea of black flops out of her pencil like as if by accident, ah. and she's already turning to the next page, drawing a smear of gray. But flip, the gray smear parts. A continent, flip. Terrain, flip. A meadow with two dots in the middle, and flip. Your head, her head, the flower. God, you cough and kneel hard <laughs> in the dirt. You're back where you began. Sick as a dog. That's cool! The artist takes your hands and hold them tight. 
Hers are stinging hot, like a truck hood after a long drive. Hmm. It always wraps back around, she whispers in your ear. No matter how far I go, I'm always coming home. I like that. The woman with tremendous artistic ability. Yeah, tremendous might even be underselling it a bit. I don't think there's anything in the Oklahoma handle, panhandle up here. No, it's the Texas panhandle. What is it called in Oklahoma? I don't remember. This odd little bit here. Nothing by the look of it. Okay, stop over there. I should remember that right clicking recenters the camera behind you. So if you walk around with the right click held down, this this is how you see the horizon. Yep. Hey, money. So I don't have to walk around quite so aimlessly. If I remember how the controls were. Yeah, okay. This is how I was playing the first time I played the game. This was just on permanently. Okay. Into Texas we go. So we're gonna go... Oh, God. Up here. Swinging on down here. To the end of Texas proper. Down to... Through San Antonio. Through Houston. Through Dallas. Just... Uh, uh, this is gonna take a while. Texas is uh, it's a big place. Amarillo. Amarillo. close and talks about the true music of the soul people who know him hmm. about the things he's done everyone else in the club is focused on the stage but he ignores it and talks to you well hell listen he talks about everything his life songs he used to play mentioning names that sound famous and familiar club goers and musicians alike pat his shoulder as they pass. He is liked and respected here. Perhaps the tales are true, but he talks only to you. I am a drink. Before you can order a round, one arrives and he pays. With weathered fingers, he clinks his glass to yours, talking once again about his shining days, his best days. How much he means to this culture. See, Dad. Soon, he nods off at the bar. You gather your things and leave. By the door, however, you see a faded old gig poster. You recognize him in the big band ensemble posing there. Younger, smiling brilliantly, sharply dressed. But... You cannot remember his name. Hmm. Two men sit in the shade, exchanging insults. The first says, <laughs> That's a low blow, even for one like you. The second responds, One like me? But you're the cheating, lying son of a... The first sighs and shakes his head. No, that doesn't sound right. His tone is... Oddly jovial. All right. Hmm, good point. How about you're a scoundrel and a thief? Nah, don't think you can carry it off. Not with your accent. Could just call you a. C you often do. I like how the game's suddenly censoring itself. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. It'll make me furious, okay? So I'll go for a knife, they'll draw back, and you'll get a peek at their cards. <laughs> Perfect. I'm 
Not sure this will work. Ah, oh, come on. We're so close. How about... They've forgotten you already. Yeah, all right. Upgrade. Mm -hmm. What are we getting upgraded? Murdering twins who cannibalized their third brother. Holy shit. That's better. That's so much better than just murder. Oh, Jesus Christ. Alright, where are we headed? It doesn't look like it matters. Oh, Texas. It's gonna be a long road, my friend. Alright, we're hopping around this river bend. Got two hands, old man calls the down tree is flat in his front yard and his porch too. His two sweaty sons are chopping into movable pieces. Throw logs into the old carts. <laughs> old man's cart. At least I can sell for firewood. He sighs, tossing you some coins. You cannibalize your twin, is that more 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 morally heinous than cannibalizing somebody else? I don't know. Why would it be more morally heinous? Oh, in the same way that, like, uh, killing a family member is considered more morally heinous than normal murder? Uh, fratricide and all that? Yeah, what would you call that? Because auto-cannibalism is the act of eating yourself. Cannibalism is the act of eating, you know, one of your species. Uh... Filial cannibalism? I don't know. Dallas? Is this far north? Really? Man, I thought Dallas was way further south than this. Oh, uh, well, if it's right here, no, that looks about right. Huh. Well, I'm gonna have Twin O'Camino. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. woman hauls a bin of clothes over to a vat of gray water. She's sluggish. Moving seems to take great effort. It seems very similar to the, shirt into the vat one we got with this image before. working it over a washboard. Despite her slow movements, there's an inexorable intensity to the such, way she works. Such a good word, but her inexorable. Eyes are bloodshot and glazed. Her lips are cracked and split. She can't have slept or washed in days. She collects the next bin, moving with the shuffle of a sleepwalker. Who's making her wash? You enter the nearby shack. A man's inside, sorting through a jumbled bag of dirty clothes. You hear about Celia? I know how it looks, but she's fine, really. Since her daughter vanished, all she's been able to do is work. He smiles. Best worker I ever had. I admonish him? He jabs a finger at you. This isn't your business. Others have tried to help, but it's no good. All she wants to do is work. She gets agitated when she's disturbed. Uh -huh. I make sure she doesn't work herself to death. I'm all she has. All right. Mindless, mindless laundress. Would you call her a laundry machine? I guess we cut back over here to Louisiana, so we head southeast. Not that I want to go to Louisiana. We've already been in Louisiana. But I do want to screw at the border just on the off chance I'm missing out on anything. But 
No, no, search, search. Folks are setting up a cooking tent. You want to make some cash? Yeah, sure. I mean, I feel like I have enough already. All right, cool. There's some down there. I'm not seeing. I'm gonna scroll my name on the bare bones of the earth. I'm gonna dig my heels into the ground. Cause when it's like four corners here. Eat any barbecue I yet? I wish. Yep, this is the southwest, all right. Some cash? God damn it. They've taken over a booth at the roadside diner. Tables strewn with papers and forms. He's in shirt sleeves, revolver hanging loosely off his chest. She's in a moss green dress from two seasons ago. And a felt hat that's begun to warp. Hmm. You slip into the booth next to him. Tell me again where you saw him last? He asks. He was in the car with me. We were just driving down the road. Is he a PI? So where did you stop the car? He asks. She sounds exasperated. I told you. I never did. They have the same accent, same drawl from somewhere in North Texas or Oklahoma. But his is subtler, although he's been trying to shake it for a few years. Keep your eyes to yourself. You try not to disturb them, but in truth, they barely know you're there. We were going 40 miles an hour when he vanished. All I saw were those damn lights. In the lingering, baffled silence that follows, you find your cue to leave. Aliens. String lights in the desert. Yep. Aliens. Story upgrade. What's getting upgraded? 60 unidentified corpses buried together in one cemetery. Rather than an unmarked grave. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. The strains of ragtime rise from an almost tuned piano. At the bar, an older woman, dark haired and striking, toys with her cigarette holder. Hope you don't need lodging, the bartender tells you as you sit. The hotel's haunted. At that, the woman chuckles. Why'd you laugh? Ah, it's an old story. Way they tell it, there was a lady living on the fifth floor. She liked to have a good time. Now, she had a boyfriend who didn't like that so much. Got jealous. One day, she disappeared. Can you guess what they found in her room? What? She grins at you. No one. Just a pool of blood. And a note from the boyfriend saying she'd be sorry if she didn't listen to him. He got arrested. Couldn't prove anything without a body. But he stopped drinking after that. Maybe even stopped being mean. You think he did it? Maybe. She laughs. 
I doubt it. But it scared him good. Some fool hotel maid thought she saw the lady in that room after. Now everyone says it's haunted. She laughs. I'll tell you a secret, though. If I'd have known what would happen, I wouldn't have gone back for that necklace. Yeah, it's her. Stage your own murder. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that was kind of evident by the way she was telling it. Ah, you know you're in Texas when. They were dressed in white from toe to tip, pale horses trod below. And last among their number, a chilling sight to see. The thirteenth horse they empty with a saddle meant for me. White rider. Motors running, and nobody's driving. Okay. Flies buzz the windshield. Beyond the van is a driveway, paved through cut green grass to the top of the hill. There you see a squat, rustic mansion. The sun turns your back damp. So, okay, th these VW buses were not a thing. These weren't made for a substantially long period of time. In a previous video, I talked about how uh, Volkswagen as a company wasn't founded until 1939. The VW, the, the bug, the, the VW bug, the V1, was the first thing they made. And it wasn't for a long time until they made this model of bus, or the V VW bus or bug bus as people think of it now. So this is not from this time period, and the one we ran into before, also not from this time period. I think that's probably just a mistake by the graphic design team, but a little odd. Look at the car! It's a newer model. You don't recognize it. Okay, maybe not. Inside, you see food wrappers, bottles of beer, and half a discarded cheeseburger. You come around to the windshield, or something incomprehensible is written in big, sloppy letters. Backwards, as to appear correctly in a mirror. Is this the fucking Scooby-Doo gang? I should have gone into the mansion. I should have gone into the mansion if this is fucking Scooby-Doo. In lipstick. Piggies. The word, piggy. You glance back and forth between the message and your own reflection in the windshield. Oh, never and mind. On the glance, you see a large figure hovering behind you. Then you feel something hard. <laughs> then you see nothing. <laughs> you feel something hard. Yeah, yeah. You awake, face down in the crisp green grass. The back of your neck tender with sunburn your head still tender from the blow the van is gone tracks carved in the dirt lead back toward the road you check your skull still intact your wallet however is less so okay this I like a lot more I was gonna say, if we're in the Southwest and they don't have anything inspired by music of indigenous peoples from the Southwest, I'm gonna be pissed. Though, mocking, uh, or mocking or mimicking indigenous musical traditions without proper consideration to the spiritual or, uh, religious implications of those songs has, historically speaking, been a major misstep. heard about it from my sister-in-law happened to her daughter's friend it's true you heard this one before story about a saint wandering the land pulling lost souls in to be saved halfway through you realize it's a story of a mysterious woman preaching everyone who will listen yeah uh san antonio though i uh want to go to the store i would like 
Oh, I want coffee. I want ice cream float, but I have... I have things to make this possible. I have hard cider and ice cream, so I can do this. Coffee. Hmm. Oh. Cora, there's the answer to your question. I could get barbecue. Ain't happening. So we need money. So let's earn some money. On our streets, looking for a place to look. I forgot to read this. We will look for work. You wait outside a lumber warehouse for hours. You don't get there early enough for work in the warehouse, but trucks swing by every few minutes picking up loads of fresh wood and sometimes a few people from the street corner for a job elsewhere in the city. Batter pickup stops at the curb. There's only a few planks left in the back of the truck and the cab is packed with teenagers. Young man with a bent cigarette drooping from his lips shouts you, Hey, want to make some cash? Absolutely. The door of the truck cab opens slowly and the boys slide around to make room for you. You count them in quick six total. Two of them crouch under the dashboard at the foot of the front passenger seat. There's something ominous about their sudden silence. The moment the truck pulls into the street, every single boy but the driver produces a switch plate of some sort. Everyone is bare knees and shining knife blades. Give us your money, howls the driver, accelerating to the middle lane. You reach back for the door latch and a second later you're landing hard in the middle of the street. The truck roars away, the boy's shocked face is crammed back to look at you, a taxi nearly runs you over, passerbys jeer as you went to the curb, could have been worse. What well, said I lost health, but I still have health, so maybe these are overflowing, maybe you can have more than two energy or two health or two money, I don't know, that money ran out fast, let's explore. Little remains of the Alamo, just a chapel and some barracks. Remember it though. The inside of the chapel seems off like a space that is both ruin and restored relic <laughs> unsure if it should crumble or sparkle the rumbling of cars outside is undeterred by the shaky adobe walls yeah i've been to the almo outside of it never went in didn't seem worth the time or the money to do so you come across a well a squat square made of stone, hidden beneath a large, crooked oak tree. And on it sits a dejected man, eyes downcast, face hidden by a broad-brimmed hat, and clothes so thickly coated with dust that you can't make out their style or color. He looks up at you, and you get a better look at his face. Sun beaten, several days unshaven, mm. and body. Though he smells strongly of black powder, a single sharp hole punctures his torso. From there, blood oozes down and smoke wafts up. What is with all these goddamn ghosts? Try to help. No, no, no. It's too late for me. He bats your hand away. His is clammy and cold, even in the hot, dry air. It's a long time before he musters the strength to say anything more. I marched out here, following some rich man in New Orleans. Is this... Bum, bum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, da -dum. This is this is the house of the rising sun. Isn't it? It's very similar to the house of the rising sun. Or the map. Maybe maybe I'm just putting this together. Uh, for what? He makes a hollow noise like he's trying to laugh. But has forgotten how. For this, a heavily worn boot scratches a line. It's not House the of the Rising, Rising Sun. Just reminiscent Man, of it, maybe. For the dirt of this place, I was promised. But instead of speaking, Dude, that was good. He just slumps <laughs> forward, <laughs> bent <laughs> like a reed. Interesting. Okay, so...
So this is saying half health. Go back into San Antonio. Now it's showing half health. Before it was showing full health. So money would be nice. Bum, bum. He's parked his car by the side of the road. A luxurious black thing, waxed so that it mirrors the stars in the sky overhead. The desert dust doesn't seem to stick to it. You find the driver, alone, retrieving something from the trunk. What you What's doing? it look like I'm doing? He asks, as though it's obvious. He doesn't sound like the Okies driving on the road west. Okies. He has the cold tones of an educated New Englander. The pointed feet of a tripod dig into the coarse sand, hoisting his telescope heavenward. Staring at the Not stars? Not the stars, friend. His tone is outwardly irritated, but unable to mask his glee at correcting your misapprehension. Looking for a planet? There's a ninth one, orbiting far beyond Neptune. Fucking Nibiru? What's it called? Nothing yet. But we all know it's out there, waiting for someone to prove it exists. And once you can prove something exists, you get to name it. Can you imagine naming a thing that every generation hence, for all time, will remember you for? Well, joke's on you, my dude. Pluto, not a planet. And Planet Nine is not likely to be a thing. Give me health. Hello, random house, you have food? Search. The jackrabbit flees across the desert. Dano jackrabbit. And the house cat follows. Dano house cat. They're equals in speed and finesse. A miniature portrait of lion and gazelle. This drama of nature captivates. Even though, if you're honest, the whole spectacle's mostly just adorable. <laughs> the hare turns as it lands and carries the momentum forward. The house cat reacts too slow, skids past, putting distance between the two critters. The hare races past you. Are those? No. Couldn't be. This jackrabbit has antlers. Huh. Cheer for the jackrabbit. The whoop fills the jackrabbit with determination. <laughs> it turns and thrusts its antlers at the Shit. cat. Little teeth bared like needles. The house cat hits the brakes and bolts the other direction, twice as fast as before. Oh, river crossing. Oh, we're already down at the Mexico border. Damn, that was fast. Uh, I have a big soft spot for the southwest. Uh, yeah, apparently I found a jackalope, yeah. If I ever get to the point where I can actually retire, it's almost certainly, and I've been talking about this for years, gonna find a decent plot of land out in the middle of the fucking desert on a cliff somewhere. Probably in New Mexico. Arizona. Though I'm not opposed to Texas. I'm a little opposed to Texas. And start a bar. The expectation is not for people to come and drink at the bar. The expectation is for me to be able to drink at the bar. And to have friends, visiting musicians, stuff like that, stay and play. And it'd be more of a... Uh, underspoken mountain retreat more than anything else. 
No fucking way are we already done with Texas. I'm, well, I'm looking at New Mexico, so it looks like we're done with Texas. I was expecting that to take so much longer. I like how they, uh... These are important landmarks that we're coming up on here across the Rio Grande. Over in Mexico, and I appreciate that the game actually models them in, because otherwise the Rio Grande would not feel like the Rio Grande should. Yeah, let's go to El Paso. Yeah, alright, there was something left of Texas. I think we're gonna wrap up after El Paso. We have a nice fireplace here, so we get to meet somebody new. Yeah, yeah, on the whole, I think this is a good way to wrap up. And do that little story, then that little story, then go into El Paso, then pop out and talk to that person. Or not. Why is the whistle menu still up? Shit game, why are you doing this thing? Oh, okay, there we go. Boysman is on the radio. Haunted Mill. Story of the Creepy Mill, but now it's haunted. Wait, I can cross over into Texas? Oh no, no, right, New Mexico goes further south. We're right here. And the, uh, the Rio Grande ends up being a north-south river at this point. Damn it! The Chevy sedan, laden with suitcases, chugs to a stop beside you. A woman leans out the window. An infant screaming. And two boys are punching each other in the back seat. Could you drive us for a while? I gotta feed the baby, but we need to keep moving. I could pay you. That won't be necessary, ma'am. You grip the wheel tight as sounds of chaos fill the car. The boys have begun to wrestle in earnest on the Chevy's bench. Yorona! <laughs> Their mother hisses. Both boys straighten instantly. In the mirror, you see their stricken expressions. The only sound is the baby's soft suckling. Tell me about Yarona. You direct the question to the boys in Yarona? the back, but they don't make a sound. Their eyes are wide and frightened. Patting the infant on the back, their mother chuckles. The boys don't speak another word, even when you part ways down the road. Google. What this is, Google? In Mexican folklore, Arona, the weeping woman, is a ghost of a woman who lost her children now cries while looking for them in the river, often causing misfortune to those who are near her or hear her. Though several variations exist, the basic story tells of a beautiful woman by the name of Maria who drowned her children in a river as means of revenge towards her husband, who left her for a younger woman. She drowns herself in the river when she realizes her children are dead. That's actually quite believable. This happens. At the gates of heaven, she's challenged about the whereabouts of her children and is not permitted to enter the afterlife until after she's found them. Maria is forced to wander the earth for all eternity, searching in vain for her drowned offspring. She constantly weeps, hence her name, Arona. She's caught between the living world and the spirit world. Mexican parents often use this story to prevent their children from wandering out at night. In some versions of the tale, she'll kidnap wandering children who resemble her missing children. She asks them for forgiveness, then drowns the children to take the place of her own. People who claim to have seen her say she appears at night or in late evening by rivers or lakes. Some believe that those who hear the wails of La Rona, La, 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 La Rona, Rona, are marked for death, but those who escape in time are not so marked, similar to the Gaelic Banshee legend. She said the cry, I might mios heos of heos. God damn it. Mis heos. Mi heos. My, my children. Yo no comprendo espanol. No, no habla espanol. 
Gringo. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, this is gonna go a little over an hour, but we're gonna do this. We're gonna do El Paso. We're gonna do that. Gonna wrap up Texas by the end, so help me God. An excitable man in dirty suspenders waves you over to a cave mouth. Rodner, do me a favor, friend. Can you, uh, inspect that cave there? Got two bits with your name on them. Oh, that's not suspicious. All right, then. The cave interior is nice and cool. There's a whole bear hide, treated and tanned, lying on the ground. It'll be a good spot to rest for a time, if not for the human skeleton. Excellent. Back of the skull has a hole about the size of a quarter. You find a slip of journal paper inside the mouth. Normal bones, which Floyd the respectable prospector ain't touched nor seen much, merely stumbled upon during honest business. <laughs> what? The man jumps out of his suspenders when he notices your return. Friend! Oh, gave me an awful scare. Making me think you got lost in there. Hey, you see those bones? How do you think that fella croaked? Well, there's a hole the size of a quarter in the back of his head. One might imagine it had something to do with that. Natural causes or plenty of bears around? Plenty of bears around. The man cups your hands and screams in rapture. My sly friend, you didn't tell me you're a detective. I'd have never deduced that in a million years. Lord in heaven, I'm blessed. Blessed. After he pulls back, you feel something inside your hands. Oh, it's a shiny silver coin. Great. Void the suspicious prospector. Nothing suspicious about Floyd. I mean, the skull even said that Floyd didn't kill him, so who am I to doubt that? I never read the text for San Antonio. <laughs> Fuck. El Paso. There's a dusty haze hanging over this strange, tent city. The Rio Grande carves a barrier between you and Juarez. You can see folks on the opposite bank. Wonder what stories they're collecting over there. Yeah, I do. I would love for this to go into Canada and Mexico, though, like I was talking about earlier. The uh, cultural imagination of the Depression is already varied enough within the context of the United States and the subcultures of the United States. Extending the scope of this game to cover even nearby Mexico and Canada would add in completely different cultural nuances and stories. Which are, is cool, but is outside of the scope of this game. The so first thing we're gonna do is uh, get some fucking quesadillas. Arrgh, quesadillas are really easy to make, but I still want it. Delicious, depends on the whiskey. Typically delicious, not a spaghetti guy. Oh, well, let's earn some money. Want to wander the streets? Nah, look for work. Waiting for the light to change outside a corner store when a cashier sticks his head out the window. Hey, got some time? Want a little cash? Sure. Needs help moving cases of compressed pop fizz. We've done this exact thing before. There's three soda jerks in this neighborhood alone, and we're making a killing. Can't stand the stuff, and I'm not sure it's right. Eh, let's explore. There's a wallet on the ground where the alley joins the street, stuffed with bills. You pick it up and glance around, spotting a man on his hands and knees in the alley. Excuse me. I appear to have lost my glasses. All right, Velma. He sheepishly admits. Well, look for them. They're on the ground, just behind him. You snag them before he crushes them with an errant knee. Oh, thank you. Thank you. He scans the alley. You, uh, didn't find my wallet, too, did you? Yeah, I did. Here His you go. His face lights up. Oh, thank you. He turns, then hesitates. You know, I had a ticket to see the new movie at the plaza. <laughs> Not in the mood after this. Please, take it. For your help. Really? It seems like it'd be relaxing to see a movie after that whole ordeal. But alright, let's go to the your seat cinema. Is plush and comfortable. The crowd chats excitably around you. You settle in for the movie. 
Hell yeah. The first few scenes play out fairly predictably. It appears to be a romantic comedy about golf. The crowd seems largely disinterested. That sucks. They're pro abruptly. Oh shit. The scene shifts from the dancing and grand ceremony to a shot of a grubby alley. People start sitting up in their seats. It takes you a second to realize you're looking at yourself. You stoop to pick up the wallet, then see the man. The crowd grows tense as you hand him his glasses. The audience cheers as you hand over the wallet. The applause spreads like a brush fire. People start leaping to their feet, turning to look at you. Their approbation continues huh. for far longer than is comfortable. <laughs> Move on, I guess. The morality play at the Plaza Theater in El Paso. Alright, now we get to meet this rando and wrap up after this. Rocio? Stuart Arias? When was the last time you ever prayed? <laughs> Been a long time. For me, it feels like a lifetime. My hands, I, I never thought I'd see my hands so warm, rough, and yellow what? from the calluses. What's this? Or, sorry, this thing on her? I mean, it's a button or a, a patch. Might have an eagle on it? Can't tell. There's a steam like fiery needles like surging through my fingers. When my hands meet, the pain grows hotter, meaner, and my arm muscles contract as if they wish to rip through the skin. And yet, when these hands are picking fruit from the ground, the pain cruelly leaves. You have some serious arthritis. Un dolor y bien desentados. A dollar twenty is the absence of a prey. I never thought I'd see myself like this. Maybe you have a good hopeful story to tell? Hopeful. 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 Superhuman strength at a happy new grandfather. That's that's hopeful, right? I mean, or happy or cheerful. Maybe it's cheerful. What a good story. Yeah, it's hopeful. I will remember it for a while. I know. Heaven. When I held my child for the first time in my arms, I wept. I wept that Dios blessed me with such a beautiful creation. I wept because he was born from a broken one. Do you know anything funny? That's sad. Anything I can write home about to Mijo? Your kid? Your, your... Mijo. Yeah, it's Mijo. The, the, the way this is spelled out does not sound or... My brain doesn't read this as Mijo. My brain writes this, reads this out as Mijo. But Mijo is the way I thought it was pronounced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not a broken creation. Ain't nobody a broken creation. Um, funny, funny, huh? Funny. Funny. Funny? <laughs> funny? Oh, we don't really do funny around here, so... We're here. Just gonna talk about Shaw instead. Oh, how funny! Thank you, it is not often that I can laugh. Do this, do that, always, always telling me what to do. I wanted to be a dancer, you know? <laughs> I watched the local girls dancing in festivals with glee. Yet deep down, mm -mm, I was envious. Not of their skill, but of their freedom flowing in each move and step they made. Now I would like a story that's a little scary. You got it. Scary I can do. Wounded soldier in the southeast. Bam. Done. Oh, that is good. Very frightening. My past. 
I remember being chased by a dog in San Gabriel, el pueblo I grew up in. <laughs> it bit my leg, oh. and all my father did was shout at me, Stop acting like your mother, he'd say. Fuck! And then she would just look at me from behind him, and her face... I'll never forget that face. Please, share a story of hope with me. Damn, okay. Hope, huh? Hope. Fishermen and fish catching seagulls. Fish calling seagulls. This was hopeful, right? What a wonderful yeah. story. We need stories like this to give us strength for the future. There's a stir amongst the workers going on for years now. Whatever it is, I don't know oh. if it'll work. Yeah, right. This is a tumultuous time for Mexico. And if it doesn't, well, just another day for picking grapes. And this is a tumultuous time for the United States, too. The the Depression really could have spurred on some serious um, Marxist-Socialist organizing had it not been stemmed. Now, tell me a funny story. Make me laugh. Damn it. I, I can't make you laugh. So I'm just going to tell you the story about something else because we're, we're done. The full open eye means we finish this. So, pig farmers, what is this one? Is this funny? <laughs> Holy shit, that's funny! Oh, if Miko were here, I would tell him that one. I would like to see his little face laugh. Cute. Family. There's my mother, my aunts and uncles from her family. Oh, I miss them dearly. Especially the cookouts, <laughs> which you, my father, let us attend. I learned to dance from my cousins, so young and filled with energia. I miss them all dearly. She talks well, a lot like here my, uh, the sun. my I must mom get and ready to walk do. again. I'm going this way. New fields, new work. Except they, they, uh, she grew up in Brazil, so they throw in Portuguese all the time, but, yeah. Besides, you must be tired of listening to me. I'm already talking like una anciana, an <laughs> old woman at the edge of her deathbed. What about you? How do you make sense of your life? Oh, I don't. Cool! Alright, I like her. She's very adorable. Uh, okay, okay, okay. This and then we quit. Uh, da, 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 getting a story better, 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 better. Hotel haunted by the ghost of Twin Towers. Excellent. Alright, cool. Well, I'm gonna wrap up here. I know I've only been streaming for two hours tonight, but... I gotta wait to start. If you're watching on YouTube, it shouldn't matter. It's been an hour anyway. You know the deal. This is gonna be it for today, so stop by again tomorrow. In the meantime, make sure to comment, share, like, subscribe, all that silly shenanigans. Until then, toodaloo, take care, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.